My name is Steven Towns. I am a painter and a fiber artist, and I'm the visual artist for Declaration and Resistance. I've always sort of been interested in art. I started making when I was really young, like five, six years old, and I always felt that I wasn't the best communicator. Um, I was very quiet, very shy, and so my artistic skills were nurtured and developed by um, my mother um, and my sisters. Like I was always sort of encouraged to draw and paint. And each art teacher that I had throughout grade school, middle school, and high school always sort of nurtured it and saw that it was something that I should sort of pursue. I didn't really find like a solid sort of foundation of um, who I was as an artist until I sort of reached my 30s. So a lot of my work dealt with slavery and the person, a young black man was asking me, why did I make this work about slaves? Like, why can't you make work about the kings and queens of Africa? Um, and I told him like, my people probably weren't kings and queens of Africa. They were probably the laborers that were captured and sold into slavery in America. And just because they weren't kings and queens and they were laborers does not mean that they weren't valued. And so we need to value those people just as much as we value the kings and queens. I would describe the work in Declaration and Resistance as a labor of love. I would say that the work initially was going to take on a more dark and heavier tone. And um, during the pandemic, and experiencing some of the things that were happening at that time period, I wanted to transform the exhibition into more of a celebratory aspect of labor and the people who are laborers. Because um, I remember working in retail stores, being a waiter, working in restaurants. Like I, I felt down at times and I felt defeated, but there were times when I felt proud of what I was doing. And so I wanted to take those moments of my pride in myself and use that glimmer and that spark to create the work that um, I've made for this show. I've been looking at kind of like the past 400 years of this new social experiment that we call the United States of America. And I really wanted to situate Stephen in this history, this legacy of black painters. Stephen's portraits, the people that he's making, are from those time periods of Joshua Johnson and Robert Duncanson. So we're talking about the 17 and 1800s. And so I thought that this would be a really interesting way of kind of looking at the past and how that's shaping our present and informing our future. The way I found and selected the source material is going through various archives of universities in different states. Um, and I choose images that, that speak to me. I realized that there were so many things that I was not taught in school or I did not pay attention to. And so when I started digging into archives, that's when I realized, oh, there's so much of this history about my people that I didn't know. A lot of the work that I've made for the show is focused on areas of South Carolina which I'm from. Um, West Virginia was a place that was fearful to me as a black person. And so like when I went through archives, I saw so many stories of black Americans in West Virginia and Pennsylvania, cause that's where the show is. And it's sort of prime for um, me having this discussion about labor. Because a lot of the source material I find is in black and white, I have to sort of develop colors. I have to, um, color the people, give them sort of life from that black and white blurry imagery. One of the things is that I am using the visceral memory of the colors um, and the atmosphere of where I came from for the painting. So the painting, that actual location may not be that deep red or that golden color, but in my visceral memory, that is what it was like um, being from that area. A lot of times I'll have to search for like a World War I soldier's outfit. So I know what the color of that outfit is 
um, or clothes. I'll look up vintage dresses or vintage flags or a vintage sort of um, hair cutting tool. So I'll have to see sort of what the color and shape of that is. And then I tie that into the piece that I'm making. It sounds weird, but it's a communication from me to the person that's being depicted in that picture to the photographer that actually took that picture. So that photographer had some thing that they were kind of communicating, but there also is the, the person that's being photographed that has something to say. So I am in a period of making quilts. Um, I just got through a period of making paintings and I'll be switching over again um, after I finish these series of quilts. Um, and it just sort of puts me in a different headspace. It's me going to fabric stores or um, craft shops and looking at um, different pieces of fabric and saying that is my style that fits with me. I have just been exploring um, various ideas because the theme of the show, um, Declaration and Resistance, is about people trying to make change. I wanted to not only explore people who were able to make change, but some who tried and failed. But they were some of our, our four founders that sort of created the change that um, we've experienced here. I am in Falling Water um, at High Meadow doing an artist residency here. The main purpose of being here was working on a project about Elsie Henderson, who was um, a cook here at Falling Water, um, but it has also been extended to working on some quilting work that I have as a part of the show at Westmoreland. I just had always learned about Falling Water in the house, um, but never the workers there. Because I am working on a show about labor, I wanted to include um, one of the important people here. She lived a long time. Um, she's just passed, but I'm going through written notes, um, some conversations with workers who she's spoken to, and I hope to use all of that to frame a painting around her. I'm very attracted to Stephen's work because he is such an extraordinary storyteller. People who are very much relegated to the margins of history, Stephen will bring them into the center. He centers their lives and he really brings out this, I say, agency through the ways in which he paints them and the ways that he stitches their lives together through the art of quilt making. I feel like my work has evolved um, from just strict portraiture to like creating different landscapes. Becoming a quilter has sort of shaped um, how I think of my paintings. My work was always about assemblage and construction and layers upon layers upon layers. And then when I started quilting, it made me see things in a, in a totally different light. I start with a sketch and the sketch becomes a pattern um, and then I go with the pattern but I feel like the pattern is not sort of full until the pieces of fabric are put together. Quilts are more um, labor and time intensive but they can be more communal because I, I have people that help. Um, I've had my mentor Quincy Pugh here helping me. So um, it's been a really wonderful experience working on these pieces with him. Some of the pieces that you see looked completely different at one point and we spent a lot of time working on it and then I felt like, well, this just is not speaking right now. And so I've had to cut out whole portions um, of a quilt and redo it just because it didn't tell the story that I needed to. And so even though I had sketches and I had an idea of um, what I see in my head, it's always different than what is fully fleshed out. And a lot of times what 
what comes out is much better than what I had in my head. It's been quite a challenging year. The place that I had my old studios in has been up for sale and rather than deal with when I may have to move out, I was like, I'm gonna get a home and I'm gonna have a studio in it. And so um, it's been a lot of changes this past year. All throughout the way, I, I was determined to finish this work. And so there's a determination um, that I've built up over time because this was not easy to put together. And this has been one of the exhibitions that I've done that have had the most challenges that I've sort of ever experienced in my life. I'm in it, in it, but I am proud of the work that um, I've been able to do thus far. I've seen the growth in subject matter um, and just ability. So um, just seeing what has come out, I feel more comfortable in what I can do and feel proud of the artistic abilities that I've developed throughout the creation of this exhibition. I am looking forward to seeing all of this work together in a single space because I felt like I've lived with it for the past two years. Um, and when I see the work, I see the challenges that go into the work. But I feel like um, through this, I've been able to breathe life into um, each of the pieces that I make and also breathe life into each of the archival photos um, that I've been able to use throughout this process. And I hope that um, it makes people interested in the people that are in the portraits. Maybe a story will be written about one of the people that I've painted that I couldn't find out um, in my own research. So I hope that this work sort of lives on um, and that people have sort of a beautiful cathartic experience when they come to the exhibition. Mm -hmm.